Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining our briefing today. Well, here we are again as North Carolina prepares for our second winter storm in a week. We're looking at another round of snow, sleet, freezing rain, and ice, bringing more treacherous roads and power outages. It is a familiar forecast, but a different place. This time, it's the people in eastern North Carolina that will likely feel more of this storm's brunt, while those in the mountains and foothills will see very little, if any. And while we know the forecast has changed in the past few hours and may continue to change, now is the time to get ready if you're in the forecast zone. Before tonight, get groceries and essentials you'll need for the next few days and make sure you're prepared in case your power goes out. Pay close attention to your local forecast and make sure you know the expected conditions in your area. I've issued another state of emergency for this storm that allows us to mobilize state resources and lay the groundwork for potential federal reimbursement, just like the storm this past weekend. And like before, we're activating National Guard troops to help our counties with transportation and other needs. 114 soldiers with high clearance vehicles, trucks, and four-wheel drive ambulances are staging in Central and Eastern North Carolina today. They'll move to affected counties when they're needed. We expect significant power outages from this storm in our southeastern counties, including the cities of Wilmington, Jacksonville, and New Bern. That's where a quarter inch or more of ice is expected on trees and power lines, and that's a recipe for power outages, unfortunately. Prepare for your power going out by keeping your phones and other devices charged and make sure your heating fuel supplies are adequate. As always, never use generators or gas grills inside your home or garage. The carbon monoxide fumes can be deadly. And make sure you report your power outages, if you have one, directly to your power company and leave 911 lines open for life-saving emergencies. Joining me today are Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette, Public Safety Secretary Eddie Buffalo, Health and Human Services Secretary Cody Kensley, Colonel Freddie Johnson, Commander of the State Highway Patrol. We have uh, Todd Hunt, the Adjutant General of the National Guard, and Emergency Management Director Will Ray. Monica McGee is our sign language interpreter, and behind the scenes, Jackie Metivier and Margaret Wolf Roberts are our Spanish language interpreters. Uh, interpreters. Uh, first, we'll hear from Emergency Management Director Will Ray. Will? Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Earlier today, the State Emergency Response Team and the State EOC activated to support local jurisdictions and state agencies in winter storm response. A shift to the east in the storm's projected impacts means less snow for central North Carolina. The most significant snowfall is now expected in the northeastern counties and the biggest ice impacts in the southeast counties stretching from the Wilmington area through Jacksonville to the New Bern area. However, the forecast is evolving, so it's important to pay close attention to the latest forecast for your area. We're expecting significant power outages in those southeastern counties due to the ice accumulation and some of these outages could be multi-day or extended. We're coordinating with our private sector partners to include the utility providers on deployment of resources or extra crews. The transportation waivers and the governor's state of emergency will help utility companies move equipment and crews quickly to restore power. Our human services staff and VOADs are working to support preparations for any shelters or warming centers that might need to be opened. We're paying particular attention for portions of our critical infrastructure, such as our licensed healthcare facilities, with challenges due to any power outages. As the governor said, 114 National Guard personnel are activated to support public safety response, transportation needs, and debris management. Personal readiness and preparations need to be completed today for any weather impacts. Please visit readync.gov for more information on preparing your family, vehicle, and pets for winter weather. We also want to acknowledge that our state and local public safety personnel, citizens, citizen soldiers of the, of the National Guard, and the critical partners in the Department of Transportation have been working for an extended time period with these back-to-back -back winter weather events and want to say thank you for what you do to protect all North Carolinians. Thank you, Governor. Next, we'll hear from Department of Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette.
Thank you, Governor. NC DOT crews have rested up from last weekend's storm and all already pre-treating roads in advance of the winter weather headed our way. We're getting ready for this next round. We need you to do the same thing. Get prepared now for what's coming. Once this storm hits, road conditions will quickly deteriorate and you need to stay off the roads. We are anti-icing and participating in very hazardous conditions, particularly in the Triangle area and everywhere east of I-95 down to the coast. Once the storm hits, please stay put. Any ice that thaws will refreeze overnight because temperatures are going to be downright frigid. That means that any travel in the mornings will be particularly dangerous due to black ice. We have more than 700 employees and contract crews, as well as about 300 trucks and graders working, and we are ready to go. So far, we've applied nearly 1 million gallons of brine, and we have restocked supplies of salt, sand, and our maintenance yards so we can treat roads after this winter weather hits. We've also been testing our chainsaws and other heavy equipment to make sure it's ready to go when we are needed. With rain coming in ahead of the winter weather, we are concerned that in some areas the brine or salt might wash off the roads. Again, when the weather hits, it's best to stay home. That will make it easier for our crews and emergency responders to do their jobs. Our crews are ready for what could be a very long weekend. We will do our best to get roads clear of ice, snow, and any debris as quickly as we can. Understand, like all industries, NCDOT has been impacted by COVID and staffing shortages. We may not be able to respond in your area as quickly as we have in the past, but rest assured, we will respond and work hard to get our roads clear as soon as possible. Be patient and be prepared to hunker down when winter weather hits. There's no need to take any unnecessary risk. We just ask that you be safe and stay home if you can. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We'll now hear from Colonel Freddie Johnson, uh, the commander of the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Colonel Johnson. Thank you, Governor Cooper. The State Highway Patrol is again preparing with our partners at NCDOT and first responders across the potentially affected areas to assist motorists as the storms arrive. As we witnessed this week, the work of the patrol would be essential in the part of helping motorists navigate the challenges a winter storm can bring. During the previous storm, thousands of calls for assistance were received by our communication centers, and we are ready to again help those in need. Our messages remain the same. Only those who must drive should be on the roadways in the affected areas as the storm arrives. For those who must drive, we have seen time and time again that the key to arriving safely to your destination will rely heavily on a commitment to drastically reducing your speed. So plan ahead, give yourself plenty of time by leaving early, and track roadway conditions by visiting drivenc.gov. Slow down and move over for those who will be working alongside our roadways and remove your vehicle from the roadway if you become involved in a minor collision. During the last storm, our communication centers were flooded by callers looking for roadway conditions. Please avoid calling 911 or star HP unless it's an emergency. Thank you, Governor. Okay, we'll now take questions from any reporters in the room. Laura? Laura Leslie with WRAL. Um, <clears throat> so I guess my question is really for Secretary Boyette. It has to do with the brining. Because um, we had initially been told that we weren't going to be brining because of the rain that was moving through, and now we've seen that we are spraying brine on the roads. So can you explain what changed and why? Sure. Thank you, Laura. That's a great question. So when we look at a brining operation and the approach of the storm, we try to make sure that you know we're prepared. We're looking at the weather forecast, and you know some of our areas we, it will you know be very beneficial. Um, and as you know, it is a very uh, inexpensive way for us to prepare. And we continue to do that because it is a great way for us to prepare. And we will continue to do that each and every opportunity we have. This, as you heard from our colleagues up here, the storm is changing. And we just want to be prepared. And if we can do that to prepare to save, you know, the roadways and make them improve, that's what we're going to do. Michael? Mine are off probably for Secretary Boyette, too. Okay. Um, you had mentioned about the impacts you all are having with the COVID-19 pandemic, like a lot of other people are right now. What steps are you all taking to try to mitigate the impacts of that? 
Sure, that's a great question. So what we've done is, you know, we've looked, obviously we, we have a great uh, relationship with our contract partners. So we've reached out to them and made sure that they're prepared probably more than we normally would and made sure our staff is, is prepared. And when we can be safe following our CDC guidelines, we're doing that. Um, and we're just continuing to, you know, we trust our team. Our team does a great job in all of our divisions and they will make it work. You had mentioned about, I think, 700 people are already in position getting ready and starting to respond. Is, is that any less than we would typically see for a storm like this as it's coming in? That's a great question. So it's a little less than normal, but what we can do, we have our western divisions where they're ready. They're still pushing snow out west, too, so they're also ready to prepare to be moved to the east to help out if they're needed. And then you had mentioned about um, replenishing the supplies from the last storm for this storm. Have, are you running into any challenges with doing that, um, both just from the weather itself and any supply chain issues that we've been seeing? So it's been challenging, as everyone's supply issues are there. And But for us, it's been really good. We've gotten most of our supplies back to where they should be. And as I mentioned, you know, the storm previously hit our western divisions harder than it did our eastern divisions. So we've been able to save our salt and sand from the eastern side where this storm is headed now. So we feel really good about our position today. Thank you. Yes, sir. Josh Chapin at ABC 11. You know, you talked about going out and having people get groceries and, and do what they need to do to prepare now. But uh, what would you say about, you know, people w walking into groceries that don't have anything? We've seen so many pictures, people sharing pic pictures of, uh, I saw yesterday in a Harris Cedar there was no chicken, there was no meat. You know, uh, speak to the is that is that supply chain issues? Is that panic buying? Can you speak to that a little bit? Or probably a combination of both. We've seen a significant impact uh, of the pandemic on the supply chain uh, throughout the globe. We've been taking steps here in North Carolina to try to tackle the supply chain issue, issues. We just opened the Carolina Connector. We're doing everything we can to try to mitigate that. I know that can be very frustrating for people. I would say here with this storm coming, and if you are in the forecast area, to buy what you can. I also would encourage people to look after each other, particularly our seniors and our shut-ins who may have uh, particular issues. And we're a little more concerned about this one because it's going to be so cold Friday and Saturday night. And if there are power outages, then we, we are concerned about maybe some families who can't stay warm and we need people to check on their friends and neighbors to make sure that they are taken care of, taken to a warming shelter or taken to a friend's, taken to a friend's house. Okay, and just a quick question for uh, Secretary of DOT. Uh, the areas around here, Maybe the ones that were problematic, I know aviation, we saw the truck flip off uh, 15501 or any of those areas getting any special attention this time? So we look at all of our primary routes and interstate routes the same, um, but we will be focusing, yeah, as we always do, on bridges uh, during these events when the storm, when the uh, temperature drops like that. But yes, sir. And we got great partnerships, as you've heard, uh, with the Higher Patrol and the National Guard. Uh, it's been a great, a great team effort on this event. Thanks, guys. Okay, if we have uh, any questions for anyone on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see, Brian. I, I'm, on, I'm usually yeah. on the other side. Hey, Brian. Forgive yeah, me. you are. You really are. You've, <laughs> moved, you've moved places on me. Uh, Brian Anderson, formerly with the AP, now with WREL. Uh, I had a question on uh, price gouging protections. How can someone delineate between being price gouged versus being the result of inflation? Yeah. Well, first, you have to have be charging a price that is abnormally high under the circumstances. There's a specific legal definition in the statute. I think North Carolina has a pretty good one. Uh, the bottom line here is we don't want people trying to take advantage of an emergency situation and gouge people. The good thing about our price gouging law is that it acts as a real deterrent. First off, most of our businesses and merchants out there are out there trying to help people. They're giving away water. They're, they're trying to help their neighbors. It's only a very few who are the bad actors here. And I think our price gouging law has done a good job over the years to deter people from uh, and, and businesses from doing that. 
compared to last week, are you more concerned, less concerned, equally concerned going into this week? I, I, we're, we're concerned about this week as we were last week. And, you know, particularly the slick roads and people getting into accidents. We're also concerned about the power outages and what may be a little different from hearing from our forecasters about this weekend, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's going to get down into the teens, I think, on Saturday night. So it's going to get very cold. And if you have people who have lost power, uh, it, it, this could be a dangerous situation for them. So it's really important that our counties are getting ready with some potential warming shelters if needed. And as North, Carolina, North Carolinians do, as they always do, let's look out for each other. Two final ones on weathering a different storm with the pandemic. <laughs> uh, just uh, with regard, I know your focus is on promoting vaccines and boosters right now as the top priorities. Are reimposing any mandates to curb the spread of the virus something you're seriously considering? We're in a different place today than we were at the beginning of the pandemic. We have different tools, free, effective vaccines. And the department and our state officials are focusing our efforts on getting shots in arms, but we're also focusing on trying to help people and businesses with testing. That's where the focus needs to remain right now. And you've consistently said from the start of the pandemic, data is driving the decision-making process. Right now, are economic factors, are, are other factors now the greater priority for you? Public health and safety of North Carolinians has been and always will be the number one priority. That's why we're working so hard on vaccines. That's why we're working hard, particularly on boosters, because of the extra protection that they provide to people. And last one, you've just called for people, we have to learn how to live with this virus. What does living with this virus look like? Well, we know that a goal is to get what uh, experts call to the endemic phase of, of this pan, uh, well, of the endemic phase of the virus. And like the flu and other illnesses, it likely will be around a while. What we want to do, however, is to get our population vaccinated and boosted so it will not have as big an effect. We want to be able to live our lives normally. Everybody's frustrated right now. And the more people we can get vaccinated and boosted, the quicker we'll move out of this pandemic and into the endemic phase. Appreciate it. I'll move to the other side of the room next time. <laughs> yeah, you fool, you tricked me. Anybody online? Okay, uh, all right, we'll go to the phones. Our first question is from Skip Foreman with the Associated Press. Governor Cooper, good, good afternoon. Uh, with this being the second storm in three weeks, uh, it's a trend that might appear to tax resources in terms of dealing with the different problems that come with winter storms. Uh, are you taking a longer look at what might be in the event this starts to become a weekly or bi-weekly occurrence? So we want to make sure that we are prepared each and every time. And we've seen natural disasters get more severe over the last few years. So I think it's important that we have the resources necessary that, you know, looking long term, that we rebuild in a more resilient way when we're looking at flooding and other storms that come into our state. We always want to be prepared and we're gonna to continue to be. Next question. Our final question that will conclude today's media briefing is from Daniel Pierce with Fox 8. Hey, Governor Cooper, I wanna ask you, in relation to this nursing home in Thomasville to where two residents were found deceased by authorities, two more taken to the hospital during the last storm after inadequate staffing was found there. I want to ask, have you made contact with, with any of the residents, staff, or, their, or administrators here? And what do you think should be done to hold those responsible accountable? This is deeply troubling. Uh, we must make sure that we're looking after people in these kinds of facilities, and the matter should fully be investigated 
And that's what I expect to happen. Next question, please. Good. All right. Get prepared, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it.